So, I asked around, and some whale in Europe is trying to fence a huge rock on the black market. He calls it the right eye, saying it's part of some set called the eyes of the world. Fits the bill of what you're after, don't it? Now, here's the funny bit. The stone passes around the halls of power for hundreds of years, vanishes, and then the black market goes white hot for the thing. But the seller wanted an arm and a leg for it, to the point no one could stomach the price. So back goes the stone, but not before everyone figures out where the guy is. <laughs> You're gonna enjoy doing this one, I bet. I love sticking it to the rich. Of course, when you do, don't forget your old buddy Enzo stuck his neck out on this one. Slide me a few fuzzles out of the rich guy's pocket for my troubles, right? Anyway, you better get going before the trail gets cold. Off to the middle of nowhere. Paradise of Europe. Vigorous. This is supposed to be paradise? It's probably the longest I've gone in the project so far without talking. Hello everybody, my name is Rolak, and welcome to my newest Let's Play, Bayonetta. Now, I decided to not, you know, talk for the entirety of the prologue because, you know, there wasn't really much of an instance or opportunity for me to get going there. But, we're back, world lore, into it properly this time, and we're going ahead and getting started. Now, hopefully I shouldn't have to explain literally everything that was in the last episode. So, we should be going, uh, swimmingly right off the bat. Now, right off the bat, first things first. Despite being a combat-oriented game where you're kind of focused on, you know, uh, taking out enemies, pretty much destroying anything in your path, there's a lot of collectibles in this game. <laughs> uh, you notice we picked up something right there. That was a unicorn horn. And this is a... Man... Dragora root. These things are craft. Uh, what the hell are they called? Crafting items. We'll go into that more in more detail when we have actually a proper amount of items, so we can actually, you know, craft stuff. But for the time being, we actually want to destroy every single bench that is in this upper floor. Have to ask us how many times somebody took it until they can actually figure this out. One of the Vigrid security forces. For security guards in the middle of nowhere, they have some awfully impressive weapons. See this, we're currently in a state called Paradiso. This is the last of the crafting ingredients of Bait Gecko. Currently in the Purgatorio where nobody can really see us, but we can see them and maybe or maybe not interact with them. It's a bit inconsistent as to whether or not we can. And we also have this. Where the hell did that go? Okay, that was weird. Huh. Very weird. Where the hell did that go? Okay, I guess we're not getting that then. <laughs> uh, that was a... Oh, I forget what it was called, but... 
that actually replenishes your magic gauge. Um, and as you saw from the last episode, the magic gauge is what you use to perform torture attacks, which are essentially executions. And once we've taken care of that last bench, the train will depart. And from it leaving, we gra grab ourselves a broken moon pearl, a piece of the moon pearl. Gathering two of these will increase your limit of your magical power. So yes, there are so many collectibles in this game. <clears throat> Collecting two of the pearls will enable us to get more magic power, which will en enable us more opportunities to get torture attacks. And just better opportunities to, you know, do things. Now obviously that way is blocked because we can't use doors like a normal person, so go ahead and interact with this. Spear embedded into the wall is emitting wondrous light and resonant sound. Makes it glow brightly as if it has some sort of ability to respond to a witch's power built in. So, what better way to do it is to just, you know, go ahead and attack. And attacking it will enable it to... ...do that. I'm not going to go into extensive detail. I should probably mention, now that we actually have our proper weapons... ...we can actually have our combat enhanced by Wicked Weaves. Pretty much by ending... Con or ending combos will enable us to activate some Wicked Weaves, which will greatly increase the power of your attacks, and pretty much just kill most angels fairly easily. And it seems to be locked, so let's head down here. Grab this. Head down all the way here. Break open this, which is... Seal the Sun. Engraved has no mark in the resting place of a witch. We're gonna bust this open. And grab ourselves a key. Let's head back all the way up. And we're introduced to our first verse. Now then, combat in this game are divided into segments called verses. <clears throat> Pretty self-explanatory, you get into a you get into combat, you get into a verse, you kill some enemies, and you get some rankings. Rankings are divided up into five ranks, I believe. There's stone, bronze, silver, gold. Platinum, or six, P platinum and pure platinum. Pure platinum obviously being the highest rank if you get platinum in all the other categories. And we have this, a voyage towards the truth. These are notes from a journalist called Antonio. I will not be going into these just yet. I will be going into them once we, you know, gather some more notes. But for the time being, we're just going to ignore them. Uh, what was the other thing I was going to talk about? Was I going to be talking about something else? Oh yes, uh, rankings. So, depending on what you... Alright, I'll just go over this first. So, I had two crystal statues, but one is in pieces. It's been destroyed in an unnatural manner, as if it's in a fit of rage powered by a deep-held grudge. Let's go ahead and activates verse 2. <clears throat> it just tells us about Wicked Weaves. So, combat is divided into three segments. How quickly you... Uh, how quickly you go through the first... How much damage you take and how good your combo is. Obviously, if you do everything perfectly, you get a pure platinum. Taking no damage will obviously re result in a platinum. Finishing combat quickly results in a platinum and trying to get the highest amount of points. Combo is the trickiest one to get. Because I'm not too sure how exactly combo works. You either get a good enough combo, to keep, get a good high score going, or you just do a good combo. I don't know. Lumen Sage and Umber Witch. When their powers meet in a test of strength, the lightning released will be your test. If you wish to walk upon water, prove your mettle by dodging the lightning in a single hair's breadth. So this is a mechanic that's going to be apparent throughout most of the game. Go ahead and lift these with Y, activate it, and dodge at last moment to activate Witch Time. Which allows us to walk across water, like this thing, which is a green laurel. These are... Uh, Restores these are the health restoring items. These things are extremely rare. They uh, can drop from enemies or they can uh, drop from breakable objects in the environment. So break everything you see when you're exploring. So we'll go ahead and take care of this. <coughs> that goes ahead and activates an elevator there. But, and very similarly to Metal Gear Rising Revengeance, <coughs> there are hidden verses. More or less just um, verses that you normally wouldn't know to begin with. But upon backtracking back to this area down here, we have this. This is our first of the Alfheim levels. Alfheim are a separate <coughs> reality where it doesn't 
we'll, we'll go into it with our first challenge being whatever this one is enemies can defeat it during which time okay so I'll find our challenge levels they are more or less just like here to test your metal if I can get there we go all right as for this one we can only defeat enemies in which time so we'll dodge at the last moment for these guys to attack some more no matter how long they take come on and there we go and then we got some bigger affinities go ahead and take care of this guy for torture attack Expect me to do some combos that are very common. God damn it. Well, there goes the perfect ranking. Let's pick up this and I should go a bit better with this. Some angels drop weapons. You can pick up pick up these weapons to basically enhance your combat capabilities. And if you guys would hurry up and attack me, there we go. Or if we can, you know, hit them. There we go. Come on, one more. Really? That didn't even... There we go. I'm going to go ahead and shoot. And we got a couple more of these guys. There we go. Let's go ahead and do another torture attack. <clears throat> now, when torture attacks are activated, you have to mash a certain button. Depending on what the torture attack is, the button will be different. For example, affinities will always be with A. done that one. Damn it. Feeling I'm not going to get a good ranking on this. And it's immensely worse when they take their sweet time getting back up. Come on. Hurry up. There we go. Alright, and that's that. Probably not going to get a great rank off of this, but eh, what can you do? They get hit once, so that's going to obviously nerf the Ranking down. What do we get? Gold? Yeah, figured. Took too long as well. Oh well. And we get another broken moon pearl, which forms a complete moon pearl. That goes ahead and increases our magic capabilities. Now then, I have no idea what the magic capabilities, like any increase in magic actually does. From what I've seen, it only goes up to a certain amount. So I'm not really too sure what the maximum amount like increasing the max amount does if it has like you get more storage capabilities for the magic it's really not specific increasing your health is specific because it's very obvious as to what it does but it's not really specific in the whole magic instance and we're gonna have to go ahead and do this again yep jump up here and let's get on this now, the reason we all did that to begin with is because if you go up here, you are unable to come back down. This thing, no matter how many times you step on it, will not go back down. Which is a bit annoying, but, uh, yeah, what can you do? So, like I said, just pretty much break open any breakable you see in the overworld. Because, really, some of these things actually drop some pretty handy things. Alright. I think we're good to just keep on going. Just another... Gecko there. Interesting. I guess we can go over... Now nah, we'll go over in just a moment. Ooh, this thing. Or we can just get a cutscene. I knew it. This town's teeming with heaven's little helpers. It's making my buddies downstairs awfully nervous. And your point is... Some places in this world are closer to Paradiso or Inferno. The rat hole of a town you and I live in is close to both. But the Bigridians, they got a special air about them. They're closer to Paradiso than anyone should ever be. And that shit just plain creeps me out. <laughs> I guess I'm gonna have to set up shop here and score me some halos. These stupid rings are worth a fortune back home. 
Since it seems you are spoiling for a fight, if you come across any of these, bring them to me, and I'll hook you up. <sighs> Another one looking to lie in his pockets. <laughs> I'm beginning to see why Enzo is so fond of you. Real cute. But let's get one thing straight. Your fights are yours alone. I'm only here to watch my handiwork in action. So don't get any bright ideas about coming to me for help. No. You get one thing straight. I'm not the slightest bit interested in the fact that you made these guns. If you get in my way, I will... How do the Americans put it? Oh, yes. Bust a cap in your ass. Right on, baby. Right on. <laughs> Is the thing still there? Yes, it is. Okay, my god. Let me go over this. Purple butterfly. These things are also another uh, pickup thing. This revitalizes magic. Puts for some sort of event. Oh. Very similar to those used for magical seals. Oh, interesting. I didn't know that was interactable. So yes, Rodan's there. He's going to be helping us out in the Gates of Hell. The Gates of Hell are your upgrade station, essentially. <clears throat> From here, you can buy things and, you know, the likes. Or pleasure. Either way, I'll hook you up. Okay, so this symbol graces only a lot of stuff and items. If you're not sure what to go after, look for a base you can trust. Okay, so the gates of hell, you can buy so many different things here. First of all, being weapons, which we don't have any, so that'll be for later. Accessories, these are the most expensive items in the game, partially, due to the fact that they are super helpful. These accessories <clears throat> enable you to perform certain actions um, that are that vary in helpfulness. See, this absorbs attacks. This one you can like get little helpers. Celine's light is probably the most useful of things because uh, which time will instant be instantly triggered upon taking damage, expending your magical power. Very helpful if you're not too keen on dodging at the last moment. Uh, Replenish your vitality by taunting an enemy. We'll go into that later. Dodges incoming danger. Defeats will launch a magical counter strike. So it's a, more of a counter attack item. This um, summoning opponents from the rough of the heavens. Okay, I don't know what that does. The moon of Malaka <coughs> of Mahakala. This is a counter item. So similarly to the counter in Metal Gear Rising. You can tap the control stick in the direction of the enemy the instant you're attacked to activate Witch Time, I believe, or just counter and attack items, which are your most helpful things. Being these ones are things that you can buy and use. The, the most common being the lollipops. Uh, the green ones restore your health. Red ones increase your <coughs> red ones increase your uh, attack power. Yellow increases your defenses. Or makes you immune to attacks for a while. And purple restores your magic. Red Hot Shots are basically fairies. They restore your health when you're defeated. And the Witch Heart and Moon Pearls are... This is a heart container. This increases your magic. You can just buy these straight up. And you're going to be wanting to buy these. Because this will greatly increase your health output and your magic capabilities. But we don't have enough Halos for those. So we'll just go to Techniques. Grab ourselves an Air Dodge. <clears throat> because that is really helpful. Um, nothing else that we can actually afford. And Rodan's treasures. These will also be coming into play soon later. Alright. Let's get out of here. So yes, yeah, come back here whenever you want to buy some items. Definitely buy those hearts and pearls. Because those are going to be very helpful in your time of need. As for hearts, if we jump all the way... Nope, jump all the way up. Come on some property damage on the way up. Jump up. For God's sakes. Jump up. I forgot. Oh my God. Platforming is not this game's strong suit. There we go. 
Go and grab yourself a broken witch heart. These are heart pieces. Collect four of them and you increase your vitality. Very self explanatory a couple more of these. I guess I can go into crafting now. Pressing minus or whatever button you use. Go into this and you can concoct some compounds. Hold A to put some in. If you, um, where is the legend? Is that not here? Hmm. I guess we actually can't do anything like that just yet. Oh well. You might be wondering how I got Lollipop and a red one. We'll go into that later. Interesting. I guess you can't actually concoct things yet. You have to wait a bit longer. Oh, some more halos. Alright. All right, now we got the air dodge. We're going to be doing a lot better in the air. Alright. Here comes more things. Grab ourselves another of Antonio's notes. Crystals, Witch, and Sage. And we want to grab this thing right here. <clears throat> These, this is an Umbran Tear of Blood. As for what exactly they do, well, the game doesn't actually tell you that. What they do is something that you have to do in multiple difficulties. Right now I'm playing on normal because, you know, I don't want to you know, test my patience. But collecting Umbran Tears of Blood over, I believe the maximum is 101. Collecting those will enable you to unlock an accessory that basically enables you to always have Wicked Weaves activated. Actually, no, it's a different thing, but we'll go into detail once we actually, you know, get into the game a bit later. All right, in this pot right here is, if we grab it, an arcade bullet. Bullets used to play Angel Attack. You might be wondering what that is. Didn't go into it in the last episode, so we'll go into it once we're done with this mission. We'll get some more magic. That is useful. But if we go over to this spot. What? Third Sphere, Archangels, applaud. Don't you got introduced to these guys before? Alright, let's get down to business. Take out some of the smaller affinities first. Didn't mean to do that. Gonna be doing that a bit. Yep. Come on. I'll take care of you. Anybody else? Go ahead and pick up this. Ah, these guys. Decorations. Do this. Now, angel weapons have two capabilities. You can press X to do their standard attacks, or you can use A to do their stronger attacks. For the pulls, do a pull dance in is basically a very big AoE, which is super helpful. Come on, there we go. Why not? <clears throat> Second Sphere Powers, beloved. These are big guys. <laughs> very hard hitters, but also very slow to attack, so they shouldn't be too much of a hassle. So we'll go ahead and use this. Yo! 
Not too sure if hitting the gem in the back actually deals increased damage, but it's best to try to do it like that anyway. Go ahead and climax! This is another mechanic where you call upon your demonic sponsors, I guess you can call it, to execute very large enemies. For Gamora, you want to mash Y. There we go. Fully the, clean the circle to get you a little ring bon or halo bonus, and that will end the verse. And give us a little prize. And nope, audio for some reason, at least on my end. How do we do? Gold! Got a, combo, combo, got a bronze and combo, really? Wow, okay, was not expecting that. Did take a bit too long in between attacks, though, but what can you do? Go ahead and grab yourselves. Tra Marches. I'm not great with French. Tra Marches Le Terres. A golden LP featuring crystallized voices of angels. Some sort of silhouette is drawn upon the surface. What is that, you might be asking? Well, once we head back to the gates of hell, we <coughs> will go into detail about it. So we'll grab the uh, Beloved's Axe real quick and head all the way back to where we actually got into this area. Yeah, in this game, you're going to be doing a lot of backtracking. <laughs> so do expect to go back. And considering we don't have our means of getting around quickly, it is going to take quite a bit of while. But if we head all the way back to where we came, we will encounter more applauds and infinities. Okay, the applauds have a really stupid attack where they make the ground glow up and you know, deal damage to you after a while. Can't actually activate witch time off of that, so that's going to be really annoying to deal with. Yeah, man. Wills. Come on. There we go. Oh, damn it. Oh, jeez, have that not hit me. Let's do a torture jack just to get the heat off of me. There we go. That combo wasn't great as well. It's unfortunate. A lot better if they were just all close together. All right, I'm going to go ahead and... Actually, you know what? We've been going on for quite a bit. I think we'll call the episode here and do some more things in the next episode. Because I don't want to make every episode super long like we did in Fall of Cybertron. But we will be calling the episode here. We'll be continuing on further on into Vigrid. Hopefully taking on some more angels, obviously, and figuring out what that gold LP does. See you guys next time.